Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jason Fung. How long should you fast for? What's the best fasting regimen? That's the question we're going to cover, and it's coming right up. And I'm going to share the fasting regimen that Ursula used at the end of this video, so stay tuned. When you're trying to fast, they differ in two major ways. One is what you're allowed to take during that fast. And I covered that in the last video, what breaks a fast. In this video, I'm going to cover how long you fast for because that's the other major way that fasts are different. Our body really is in one of two states. It's either sort of storing energy, like when we eat, or it's burning its stores of energy because we need to, we have no food available, we have to take it back out. So during fasting, it's simply a transition. It doesn't mean that there's anything unhealthy, but it's a difference in terms of where we're getting our energy from. So what are the different fasting regimens? The standard regimen, but we don't often think of it that way, is three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with no snacks in between. And this is what we took mostly in the 1960s and 1970s. Up until then, snacks were very frowned upon, and because it was not easy to uh, keep a lot of uh, food in the house and so on, mostly we didn't eat in between meals and we didn't eat after dinner. So if you were hungry after dinner, your mom would usually say, oh, you should have ate more at dinner because there's nothing to eat until breakfast time. And that's where the term came from. The fasting period was from dinner one night. So if you uh, went, uh, had, had dinner at 7 p.m., for example, and didn't have breakfast until 7 a.m., that's a 12 hour fasting period that people had every day without thinking about it. If you ate breakfast a little later, perhaps eight or 9 a.m., you'd have somewhere around a 14 hour period of fasting. And that provided a pretty good balance and kept people for the most part from getting obese, as you can see, because it's quite rare in the 60s and 70s. That is, the feeding period was 10 to 12 hours. And during that period of time, we're trying to store food energy, store body fat, and that's balanced almost every day with 12 to 14 hours of fasting. That's where the English term breakfast comes from. It's the meal that breaks your fast. So the baseline fasting period should really be about 12 to 14 hours. Now, if we're trying to lose weight, specifically lose body fat, we can simply extend that fasting period. So instead of 12 to 14 hours, of fasting, we can go up to, for example, 16 hours of fasting. And this is a very popular regimen. It's often called 16-8, which denotes 16 hours of fasting in an eight hour feeding window. So for example, if you ate breakfast at 11 a.m. and ate until 7 p.m., well, that's an eight hour period of time during which you can eat your meals. And outside of that, the other 16 hours, you're going to fast. So that's a 16-8. Sometimes this is also referred to as time-restricted eating because you're restricting your feeding to a certain window of time. We can take this idea even further and we can go down to a single meal a day, for example. So instead of fasting for 16 hours, we would extend that and only have one meal, perhaps dinner, for example. So if you go from dinner one day until dinner the next day, it's about a 23 to 24 hour period of fasting. You're still eating every day in a 24 hour fast. And because of this, some people refer to this as one meal a day, also sometimes called OMAD or O-M-A-D. And this is a very successful strategy for some people and also a very popular strategy, which we'll get into later. Another variation on time-restricted eating or OMAD is what's called the five to two diet. And this was popularized by Dr. Michael Mosley. And the idea is that for five days, you would eat normally. And for two days, you would limit the number of calories that you eat to 500. Strictly speaking, it's not fasting because you're still taking 500 calories in that day. But during that day, that 500 calories 
represents much less than most people take, so it could be thought of as a fasting day. Those, those, me, those calories can be taken all at once or it could be broken into three meals, it doesn't specify. But as I mentioned in the previous video, even taking small amounts of calories, it doesn't negate all the benefits of fasting because insulin is still gonna fall, you're still going to be dipping into your stores of body uh, fat in order to provide the energy that you need. So five to two is another dietary strategy that some people have found very successful. Once we go past the 24 hours of fasting, it gets into a group of fasts that I call extended fasting because now you're going past a full day of fasting. So you're no longer eating every day. If you go to 36 hours of fasting, for example, if on Monday you eat dinner at 7 p.m., for example, and on Tuesday you don't eat at all and don't eat until Wednesday at 7 a.m., you've got a 36 hour period of fasting. And on that Tuesday, you wouldn't have eaten at all. This is a very powerful strategy because it, it increases the period of time that your body relies on body fat. By skipping that one meal that you get with the 24 hour strategy, you're able to link that directly to your sleeping period where you get almost eight hours of fasting almost for free because you're not even aware of that. So you have two sleeping periods which make up a lot of time of fasting and keeping your body in that fat burning state because your body has nothing else to rely on. And you can take this idea even further. So you don't have to limit yourself to 36 hours. You can go to 42 hours or you can go to multiple day fast. Keep in mind that the longer fast you do, the more powerful it is. However, there's also the potential that you're not gonna feel well or you're going to run into other troubles if you are taking medications, for example. Uh, so it's a double-edged sword and make sure if you're, especially if you're on medication, that you do check with your doctor uh, beforehand but there's really no upper limit to the number of days you can fast. In the 60s, it was very popular to do 30 days, 60 days. The world record is more than 380 days of fasting. So you could actually keep going. Some people actually like the extended fast because after day two, the hunger actually starts to dissipate. People get used to feeling in that state and find it pretty normal. Uh, and so they're able to lose a, a lot of weight in a short period of time. The question I hear all the time is, what's the best fast? Uh, there's not really one. They all have advantages and disadvantages. So the shorter fasts are easier to do, but they're less powerful. The longer fasts are a bit harder, but you see results very quickly. The most popular fasts actually are the shorter fasts done a little bit more frequently. So the 16-8 the and the 24-hour fast are the most popular. And there's a good reason for this. It's important to make sure that you're able to fit the fasting into your lifestyle. So if you do a 16-8 schedule, for example, by skipping breakfast, well, that's easy because nobody really minds if you just have a coffee at breakfast time. If you do one meal a day and you just have a coffee at breakfast and you work through lunch, again, nobody minds, it doesn't really matter so much. As you start to get into the 36 hour fast, now you're missing dinner time, which is the most social meal in most Western lifestyles. It's often one where you're taking with friends, where you're taking with family, where you're sitting down at a meal together to share how you did during the day. So it becomes a little awkward as you start to get into those longer fasts. And when it becomes difficult to fit it in to your daily schedule, your life schedule, well, the harder it's gonna to be to keep it going. So therefore, what works well for most people is the 16-8 fast and also the one meal a day fast. Oftentimes, there's, there's periods where it's easy to put in a, a longer fast. And there's no reason why you couldn't slip one of those longer fasts in. For example, if you find that your spouse is away on a business trip or you're alone for a few days 
and, and you have a lot of work to do, for example, well, you could easily slot them in. But it might not be something that you do week in and week out. But here's the key. Make sure that it's something that you can fit into your lifestyle. Remember that you're trying to fit the fasting into your lifestyle. You're not trying to fit the lifestyle into your fasting. Ursula was thin as a child, but after she had her kids, she started to gain weight in her mid-30s. She couldn't help it, and uh, eventually she was diagnosed with a disease called polycystic ovary syndrome. Uh, to lose weight, she even tried a gastric bypass surgery, commonly called stomach stapling, and she was able to lose a lot of weight. But unfortunately, life happened and it all came back, as has often happened with surgery. She was struggling for a while until she started to listen to some of the podcasts that I had been putting out, as well as looking at the obesity code, and started fasting. She became frustrated, and fasting during the week, uh, weeknights became easy for her, as the weekends much more difficult because she ate with her family. So she started to use 20 hour fasting or a four hour eating window. During that time, she found it easy. She took a little bit of salt and water, a lot of black coffee, and she found that if she was busy, it didn't really uh, bother her too much. And because of that, she was able to lose all her weight. She's back in control of her health and feeling better than ever. Once in a while, she adds in a 48 hour fast whenever her life schedule allows. She's still working up to longer ones, but I have no doubt she'll be very successful. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching everybody. And if you learned something, do me a favor, hit that like button. You know, the one that looks like this. You know the one. I'll see you next week. Take care.